Hey, good morning, everyone. Welcome back to The Lookout. Today is September 26th, and we're talking about the Fawn Fire burning on Bear Mountain north of Redding. Um, when we get started here, we just want to announce that this is not official fire information. Um, this is a product of The Lookout um, or unofficial fire information. And we share information um, that's publicly available from the National Fire Center um, in the forms of these briefings in the interest of fire education and helping people understand how fire works on the landscape. So if you're looking for an official briefing on the fire, this isn't it. But hopefully we can uh, teach you something about what's happening with this fire. So we're looking here at Redding down in the bottom um, where this 273 marker is. That's Redding. And we're looking north and a little east towards the Fawn Fire. Uh, the Fawn Fire started several days ago and on the first real um, full day of burning it made a large run down to the south towards Bear Mountain Road. For the last several days everything on the south and east sides has been uh, pretty quiet. So the yellow on this map shows um, scattered heat and generally we say that these areas are cooling down. The white line shows where the fire was um, night before last. This imagery was taken last night on the, the evening of the 25th. So we're just going to go around in a counterclockwise direction, look at the fire here. Um, and so anywhere you see the yellow coming right up to the white line, that means the fire has not spread here in the past you know, about 36 hours now. Areas outside the white line are places that the fire has spread. So here we're coming up towards Jones Valley. Uh, Bear Mountain is um, coming in from the right here. So all of the new spread yesterday on the fire has been on the northeast, north, and northwest sides of the fire. Orange areas are intense heat. And generally, generally, we see fires, uh, when they back down the mountain, they back slower. Um, we get lower fire severity, and they're easier to control. But on steep slopes like this, see, we've got this, um, what we call mid-slope road here. Um, and potentially, you know, as the fire backs down to that, it might be somewhere they could control it. But oftentimes, as logs burn and stumps burn and other material that's laying dead on the ground burns, it wants to roll down the hill. And we call that rollout. And so rollout can make it really difficult for us to hold a fire on a mid-slope road. So um, generally when conditions are severe, uh, firefighters aren't um, often super motivated uh, to try to stop a fire on a mid-slope road just because there's often a low probability of success. So oftentimes we'll try and we'll also have to have contingency lines um, that assume that we'll have rollout and problems with that. If the conditions aren't too severe and we have good access, you know, sometimes we can pick up that rollout. But other, other times, you know, you can have a burning round of firewood or something like that, a chunk of wood that size, and it can roll a quarter mile down a hill. So it creates a very dangerous kind of situation if you're standing on a road like this, um, this Bear Mountain Lookout Road, and you have some rollout that comes down and starts a fire below you. So um, th those are some of the reasons that mid-slope roads are often um, kind of dodgy for controlling fires during e extreme conditions. Okay, so we're coming around here past Jones Valley towards the north end of the fire where the fire is kind of back down into the, the barren zone of Lake, Lake Shasta. And so in places like this where we've got really difficult, um, steep, gullied terrain and limited access, you know, potentially we can't get bulldozers through here. Um, oftentimes we have to wait for the fire to come to us or we have to come down to somewhere we can make access. Um, and have an established line and do a firing operation that will um, kind of close off the potential for the fire. So there's a lot of patience involved in dealing with a fire like this that's gonna to come to you, especially if you, um, you know, one of the problems if you did come down here and wanna fire this road is that sending a head fire up a slope like this from the bottom usually is a high severity burn that kills everything on it. So especially if you are trying to protect commercial timberland or somewhere else where um, you don't want to kill a bunch of trees. Um, firing operations um, can be difficult and um, politically difficult also. So there's patience involved in waiting for the fire to come to you sometimes. 
especially if there's no safe way to go direct on it. You know, in a place like this, also we've been able to really slow down the spread of the fire with air tanker drops, but those drops don't put the fire out and the fire can burn below the retardant and eventually come out the other side. So all the retardant is doing is buying us time to get ground crews in there, get the crews into either with dozers or by hand to dig line around the fire, but we can't say the fire is contained until we've gone all the way around it and mopped it up. Here we're looking south. In this image, you can kind of see the, the funneling of the topography here. Um, we're looking pretty much straight south. And when the fire got started the other day, it was on this ridge and we're in this perfect bowl for the wind to blow the fire, the direction it went. We call that alignment. When you've got terrain that's aligned with the wind and with heavy fuels. And alignment is what gives us big fire runs. You can see here from the white line that the fire has spread all, you know, all the way out to the tip of this peninsula in the last um, 36 hours. Okay, we're coming over now um, towards I-5. There are these big quarries on top of the mountain here, and those help to control parts of the fire. And then this clearance along the power line was also um, useful in controlling the portions of this side of the fire. The power lines were de-energized um, for firefighter safety, and um, that often happens. Anyway, coming down this whole side of the line, uh, you know, looking at how we've got our current perimeter right up against um, this white line, shows you that we just haven't had a whole lot of spread on this portion of the line in the past uh, 24 hours. These lines down here where the fire is outside, um, that's likely just a mapping error. Um, we don't we don't do a lot of interpretation on here. We're just showing you the data, um, but I think it's uh, it's probably unlikely that that actually is new fire spread. It's more likely that uh, the previous flight just um, whoever interpreted it missed those little fingers. Anyway, um, things have really cooled down on this whole end of the fire. Uh, some evacuation warnings were lifted yesterday. Uh, we don't give evacuation advice here. Um, we advise anyone, you know, even um, even though things appear calm on a large portion of the fire, um, we're not in the business of telling people when it's safe to return or anything else. Uh, that's really the job of the incident and the your local law enforcement. We're just here to kind of give you an overview of the big picture of the fire, which is that the south end has cooled off a lot. The north end is still really active. And um, it was a lot of good work was done here to keep this fire as small as it was, given the conditions we had. Um, if you're affected by the fire, um, we wish you the best and um, stay tuned. Thanks for supporting the lookout. Mm -hmm.